Hello. All right. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Sounding good. You're both looking good. I am just going to check one, aside. check two, check <laughs> one, check two. We good? Perfect. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to fall back here and let you guys take it away and introduce yourselves. Thanks so much, Derek. Well, hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in to this fireside chat about personalized advertising in a privacy conscious world. My name is Todd Pasternak. I head up Enterprise Cloud Partnerships at Facebook. With me is Kevin Nelson, Managing Director at Deloitte. Uh, personalization and privacy are often presented as two concepts at odds with one another when it comes to digital advertising, but that isn't the case. So people can see content that is more relevant to them and businesses can reach the people who are more likely to take the actions they care about without compromising people's privacy. Now we're in the early days of this next large movement in marketing, one that looks to preserve valuable personalized experiences and people's privacy. This is going to require a lot of effort and collaboration over the next few years to get right. Today, we'll talk about how. So I'm excited to have Ken Nelson, Managing Director at Deloitte with me today. Uh, Ken leads Deloitte Digital's advertising performance offering and asset development. Prior to Deloitte, Ken has held executive roles in various MarTech, ad tech, and media companies driving both product strategy and alliance ecosystems. And a little bit about Deloitte Digital. Deloitte Digital combines Deloitte's globally recognized strength in business transformation and technology implementation with the capabilities of a world-class digital agency. Deloitte's ambition is to make the best customer-oriented organizations in the world and foster the connections necessary to shape a better future for their clients, our culture, our society, and our planet. Ken, thank you so much for being here with me. It's a pleasure, Todd. Thanks yes. for having me. Yeah. Uh, so, Ken, I thought before we we dig into the topic at hand, maybe we could do like a little warm up. Um, so, completely recognize we are not through the woods um, with with the pandemic, but here in the states, we are starting to see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and then one of the things seeing come back to to life, uh, something I know both you and I care a lot about, which is live music. Uh, I'm curious if there's uh, an artist, a band, or anyone you're really uh, looking forward to, to seeing again uh, once once you're able. Yeah, for sure, and I'd love to hear yours as well. But <clears throat> I have uh, plans next week to see uh, Tedeschi Trucks at a uh, small venue in uh, Eatontown, New Jersey, so like 200 person capacity. I also bought tickets to see them at the Beacon at the Fall with a much larger audience and a fuller band. So. Looking forward to that, and also uh, my my uh, Grateful Dead channel will be uh, will be uh, will be in full force at uh, City Field late August. So, how about yourself? Yeah, same. So, uh, gonna go see Dead and Company um, later this summer uh, in Bethel, New York. Um, I'm just really excited to see uh, you know live music back, and uh, I know it's something you you and I both have a a fond appreciation of, and is is a key key piece of our lives. So. Um, uh, all right. I feel now. Now we're we're a little more connected. Audience knows what we're going to go do this summer. Um, let's let's dig into this topic. Um, so let's start. So for for those who aren't familiar, let's let's break down why this conversation is so important for advertisers and businesses right now. So what's happening? Wait. Right, first, let's start from a, a consumer standpoint. Yeah. So I think, you know, it's interesting, you know, you know li both of us being in the industry and even for our clients, we, we kind of refer to what's going on as a Y2K moment for the industry with all the changes that need to be adhered to. But really for consumers, I think it's just as much of a Y2K moment, um, you know, since GDPR, CCPA was put out, um, consumers started receiving messages on every website, you know, should they accept cookies? Should they allow tracking? Um, with iOS ATT going into effect, it, it, it becomes sort of center at the dinner table, which is, hey, I install these apps, should I allow people to track me? And so I think consumers are generally confused with all of this. They don't really understand what all of this means, what the consent means, understanding, um, you know, that their data is used, but they, they do question, you know, um, who, who do they trust? Um, with their data. And I think that's, you know, something that they're all still figuring out. And in the end, look, uh, you know, consumers all want relevant content and advertising. Um, and I think we're, we're just beginning to educate them 
in a sense from an industry perspective of what's 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 involved from data sharing and consent to allow that to happen. Um, and at the same time, we have to you know make sure that we're protecting the consumer consent to make sure that that data is used for the right purposes and not abused. Yeah. Uh, so so maybe switching gears into the industry and regulatory bodies because they're they're evolving to meet people's expectations around privacy. So what do you see happening and how is this affecting your clients? Yeah. So there's, I mean, as we know, there's many groups, both from the industry as well as the government, really trying to figure out what's the right balance of putting um, putting things into to place to both protect the consumer, to, to police, in a sense, the industry. And, and I think... Um, all the intentions are good, both from industry, both from the government bodies, um, but but there's absolutely no coordination between those groups. And so we're, we're getting a lot of different piecemeal legislation and changes to to what, what can be done on different platforms. And um, unfortunately, this is sort of the new norm and it's not something, you know, we have these conversations almost on a daily basis with our clients and, and I wish we had an answer to say what what's it's gonna look like you know, in six months from now, we really don't know. Um, but what we do see our clients doing is 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 planning for the future, um, evaluating their their current ad tech and more tech stacks. But more importantly, is is we're seeing a lot beginning to implement new operating models within their organizations, really focused on not just the technology stack, but really data collection, privacy frameworks, um, both from a domestic point of view, as well as a global point of view. It's very interesting working with different global organizations um, at Deloitte that that will have um, certain countries are really organized where their data privacy compliance frameworks and other arms of those organizations are not so organized. So we're, we're seeing a lot of investments of firms trying to just kind of get a handle on what, what, what the other half is doing. Um, and, and I would say, look, in, in this environment, it's really important marketing leaders look beyond the transaction and, and focus on that long-term trust with their consumers and their buyers. Um, it means more, you know, about connecting what you see as a marketer than what you do as a company. And, and real durable trust is built by providing that combination of value, of transparency, consent, and control. And so, you know, th those are things that we're, we're seeing more and more adopted by our clients and certainly something um, that, that we help clients usher through in their organization. So maybe talk a little bit more about that. Like, so what's been Deloitte's approach with its clients to help them understand and navigate the longer term implications of data loss? Yeah. So we look, we, we, we recommend our clients take the approach again, first and foremost, the consumer comes first. They're the number one priority. Um, and, and making sure that um, beyond data loss, it's just making sure that consumers have all the relevant opt-ins for any kind of marketing communication, whether it's ads, it's emails, direct mail, that all of that begins to be collected and is centralized through um, a, a more sophisticated um, customer data platform, which is not transactional in collecting, you know, people think of a CDP as, as something that's tra just collecting transactions on customers, but we, we view a centralized CDP more about baking in consent management, all activity um, that they're interacting with consumers, making sure that that CDP has the proper opt-in and opt-outs of all the different marketing communications because most brands have dozens of marketing partners that they um, share some of their data with to to um, to provide those messaging messages or adds to, to their customers. So it's, um, you know, we serve as that trusted advisor for the clients to help, you know, set those systems up, make sure that there's uh, proper guidance, both uh, legal and regulatory baked into those platforms um, uh, for them to adhere to and, and build on that next generation stack for for the future. Yeah. Um, I know I know Facebook has, you know, you, you guys have built your business around personalized advertising um, so as we talk about this business, I'm sure companies are wondering, you know, what opportunities this creates for Facebook to evolve. And do you want to talk about that for a moment? Yeah. So if we have solutions like like the conversions uh, API and um, and I'll talk a bit about that in, in a second. But overall, like we're focused on how we can ensure people's privacy while still supporting a free and open Internet and enabling businesses of all sizes to reach their, their customers. And 
you know, we're, we're going to continue investing in transparency and control. Uh, and we know that the rest of the industry will and, and should continue to regard those principles as foundation of its approach to privacy. We also recognize there's more to do. So that's one reason why we're investing in privacy enhancing technologies, PET, which will allow us to provide personalized advertising while processing less personal data. So over the past year, uh, we've engaged with the academic community to develop new technologies and methods that leverage PETs to enable advertising use cases. We've also open sourced several technologies that industry constituents can leverage to build privacy focused advertising solutions. So for example, things like blind signatures, which is a privacy preserving solution to mitigate ad fraud. Um, private matching, which is it's a double blind matching technology to get insights from data without having to share raw data with other parties uh, and randomized controlled trials. So this technology enables businesses like, uh, like advertisers, healthcare companies to run experiments without needing to access identifiable user data. Um, can we also, you know, we participate in industry initiatives such as WFA's cross media measurement initiative to help build privacy focused measurement systems that, that enable advanced advertising use cases. And look, we recognize that these technologies are just part of the solution. So we also need to continue evaluating the ways that our products collect and use data with core privacy principles as our guide, like I said uh, at the beginning there. So that actually makes me think, Ken, like, so what tech, new technologies or approaches are you identifying for your clients to invest in to help them navigate this changing landscape? Yeah, so we're seeing, um, I'd say first off, we're seeing a lot of the best in class marketers begin to adopt server to server communications mm. um, between their their customer data platforms and their media partners, uh, mainly, you know, A, to improve data signals, B, to, to as a result, we're, we're seeing them improve uh, overall advertising performance by doing so. Um, you know, obviously, this is this is done alongside with, um, you know, it's coupled with strong consent management privacy frameworks to make sure that w by doing so um, that they're complying with both the consumer um, requests as well as any any type of uh, regulatory uh, compliance that needs to be put into place. The other thing that we're, we're also seeing an uptick on is, is more investment in migration of adoption of machine learning and AI decisioning on the enterprise side. So um, as as consumers or prospects um, land on different owned and operated assets, whether it's a website, uh, it's a mobile app, um, you know, there, there's not a lot of data for new for for new customers um, that are coming in sort of the funnel. So we're seeing a lot of different machine learning, AI decisioning yeah. to to look at different patterns of consumers, what they take, what they do, and try to help automate and orchestrate that journey and the next best message. Um, so th those are things that w we're seeing. Um, you know, again, I, I talked a little bit about server to server communications. Um, you guys have, have at Facebook have built solutions like conversion API to help businesses large and small yeah. to help maintain that signal resilience. Um, you, can you talk a little bit more about how, how that's going in the adoption rate at, uh, at Facebook? Yeah, yeah, I can talk a bit about um, the conversions API, and uh, yeah, so for 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 businesses that are heavily invested in web conversions campaigns, uh, Facebook's conversions API tool it creates a way to connect with Facebook directly from your server, like you mentioned, Ken, the server to server. Um, so in other words, uh, the conversions API reduces your reliance on cookies as an advertising mechanism. So businesses using the conversions API can connect to Facebook with information from their CRM, uh, qualified lead information that they gathered over the phone, uh, really like any significant customer interaction happening elsewhere, online and offline. Uh, now, businesses will still be responsible for collecting appropriate opt-ins before sharing data through Conversions API. Uh, so just one additional thing that I wanna highlight is that the API is also designed to honor Facebook's user privacy controls. So for example, if your customers use our off Facebook activity uh, privacy tool to limit whether their off Facebook activity data is associated with their Facebook accounts, those user choices will extend to data sent via the Conversions API. So you know, we keep providing customers with the relevant experiences that they love 
while supporting businesses' efforts to provide people with appropriate data transparency and control. Um, and Ken, that, that makes me think of, uh, and you, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, you know, there, there continues to be like these consent changes by industry leaders, such as Apple's, ATT, Google's, Chrome, uh, you know, cookie cutting. Like, what's, what's been your company's response to maintain transparency and trust? Yeah, I mean, as I said earlier, we, um, you know, we're just getting started with these changes. And um, uh, as I would, uh, you know, one of the things that we we find ourselves doing with most of our clients are continued briefings at the executive level, uh, really to explain what these changes mean to a brand, to their technology stack, to privacy uh, compliance frameworks. Um, it, it's very confusing um because there's just different signals coming in or signals being cut so to speak um but by different industry players i think also like as another example like we're, we're creating newsletters for our clients that go out every week just to keep them up the up the speed on uh you know what's new this week because every week there's something new and if you, you start to take a little peek into to sort of what some of the bills are that are coming downstream from the government that's a whole nother situation. So we just stay on top of it as, as best we can with our clients. Um, how, how are you guys handling all the all the changes uh, as well? Yeah, yeah. So Facebook's, I mean, we're committed to innovative tools to enable understanding and control for people. Um, so actually I could share a few considerations, you know, that, that, that we look at to guide our collective path towards a privacy conscious future. Actually, the, the, the first one uh, is kind of similar to what you mentioned, which is prioritizing education uh, for, for people. So we, we know that people want more transparency into how their data is being handled. And you know, Facebook makes it easier for people to understand what data is collected about them, how it informs their ads experiences, and how they can control it. So we have controls and settings like privacy checkup off Facebook activity, why am I seeing this ad, uh, and recent advertisers. Next is about just minimizing data collection. So this is about developing a data strategy that protects people's privacy by minimizing and safely handling any data that is collected. So things to consider include federated learning for Android or partially blind signatures, uh, private lift measurement, and WFA cross-media solutions. Um, and one more, it's around like giving and honoring people's choices. And this is about designing thoughtful controls at the right moments to put people in control of their choices and only use data for what people consent to. Uh, so you may be familiar with some controls and settings like our account center, I mentioned off Facebook activity, there's a hide ad feature, manage ad topics, and then uh, ad preferences as well. So Ken, um, there's a lot of folks watching. Um, I'm sure this is a, a question that they're, you know, uh, certainly you know, top top of mind for them. Uh, how can data privacy lead to a win-win for businesses and consumers? Yeah, I mean, um, number one, I mean, like I like I said earlier, consumers want to be marketed to. They want advertising to be relevant. They, I, I, I believe they understand, generally speaking, that their data is used for that experience and that, um, you know, it's really all about the consent and the transparency by the brand and the marketer, allowing the consumer and making sure the consumer understands the choices that they have uh, to, to get that, you know, to, to opt in or to opt out. Um, with a, with a particular brand or a media partner to get the relevant content um, and and ads that that are applicable to them and and you know like just um, you know I I opt in uh, to a, a fair amount of apps um, including yours of course <laughs> and um, I, I don't opt into everything because I don't trust everybody to be quite honest and so um, you know the other day uh, I I missed on a sneaker drop won't mention who it was because very hard <laughs> to get in those sneaker drops but uh, a little bit later in the day browsing on Instagram and sure enough like what's discovered to me is the same sneaker that I was looking in the drop hat was was being sold on checkout by another 
marketer and and I was thrilled. I'm like, wow, I even got $20 back from Facebook too. So it actually was cheaper than the original drop. Right. And, uh, you know, a couple of days later, the, the sneakers get arrive here. And so like, that's an incredible experience. Like I, I will opt in. I think most consumers feel that way. That they'll opt in all day long. Um, and, and the same goes on the reverse. I mean, I, I live in a household with three daughters and my wife and I, there's certain things I don't want to see in advertising that's really relevant to women um, and my daughters. And it's just, uh, I think it's good to know, but um, I don't need to see all the things that they're interested in either. Sure. So I, I do, uh, I do look, you know, and I think that's really at the end of the day, really what drives that, that trade-off, which is delivering that great customer experience um, and, and really helping the consumers find what they're looking for in, in a sea of so much information and content really is a win-win for everybody in, in making sure that consumers understand that they've opted in for that experience. And as long as the experience del is delivered in the right way, it's, it's a win-win for everybody. Um, you know, and how, how do you, how, I mean, I guess, you know, how, how does Facebook look at that? I'm, I'm curious, like how you guys um, are, are looking at that sort of equation for businesses and consumers within your ecosystem as well. Yeah, well, well, similar, you know, we believe that we can sustain the benefits of personalized advertising while honoring people's privacy. Uh, you know, and I mentioned before, we're working with the industry on innovative ways of doing just that, like building our conversions API tool. Uh, and we're seeing leading businesses taking the steps now to build better experiences for people while respecting their privacy choices. Um, you know, investing in this work now, it's just going to make it easier for businesses to address future regulatory requirements like enhanced transparency uh, and control requirements. Um, and actually on that, maybe we can finish with, with, uh, with a question here around like, what can businesses who are watching do right now? Yeah. So I guess um, one thing I wanted to share, I don't know how we share a link. Uh, I do have one. I've got um, the here. Oh, you got the performance trend report. Okay, great. So we just, um, at Deloitte, we released, uh, I, I helped co-author uh, a report called Performance Marketing Trends, which really outlines the top six trends from, uh, you know, that, that we're seeing most of our top clients kind of invest in and, and where we see the need for, for, for focus. And, you know, us foremost is, is, you know, data compliancy framework um, for, for businesses to adhere to and, and building out CDPs to, to help manage all of that data. Um, one of the things that is so important for firms, like, you know, outside of those, those trends that we've kind of talked about is making sure that, he, that that you have an internal cross-functional steering committee hmm. set up in the organization to begin managing the, the operating and tech model changes. It's, it's um, you know, this crosses over marketing, sales, IT, compliance, um, just about every group in the organization. And, and as I mentioned earlier, what we, we find is in some of the largest companies in the world, um, that that's an undertaking to get to get or, organized around best practices and and how to deploy these new systems. And so, um, I, I would say that's so important to to get that cross functional team now. If it's not in place, get it in place and begin to have those uh, regular steering committees. Um, you know, monthly or or every other week, just to kind of go through what's happening. Um, roadmap reviews and just, you know, uh, continue to, to, to keep that committee in place for the next couple of years because changes are coming and it's not, it's not stopping anytime soon. And so that's sort of the best advice that, uh, that we give our clients. And in some cases we, we help drive those steering committees as well. Yeah. Um, same, same question back to you. What would you, um, you know, what are some of the recommendations you would have for folks listening as far as, you know, steps to take? Yeah, yeah. So in terms of like what businesses can do right now, um, I guess I'll, I'll recap, you know, all of the steps that folks can take now to build for personalization and privacy, as you know, you said, like this, this ecosystem keeps evolving. Uh, so first, you got to make it easy for consumers to understand how their data is shared and used by your business. So next, make sure that you understand how data is acquired, used and stored and be sure to have all the consent necessary to use or share it. 
Uh, next, implement products such as the Conversions API to establish channels that are browser independent. Make the most of the data you have by expanding your toolkit. And then the last that I'd recommend is to explore data collection through valuable experiences, things like loyalty programs, discounts, VIP programs, uh, et cetera. Um, Ken, um, I wanna thank you. Uh, thank you for the time, uh, for your insights. Uh, I hope this was valuable for everyone watching. Um, real, real quick to learn uh, more about how to work with Deloitte and other Facebook business partners. We're gonna flash a slide up on the screen right now with a QR code and a link uh, where you can learn more. And uh, I just wanna thank you all for tuning into our session. Have a great uh, rest of the day. Awesome, thank you both so much. And we're sharing this in chat now. We're also taking a screenshot of this and putting it in our show notes. So if you're watching this right now, you can go to the show notes link. It's ecomtech.link forward slash social 21 dash show notes. You can review all this entire conversation, some of the key takeaways. Thank you guys so much for so much good stuff there. And, uh, and also the previous sessions and the future sessions of this two day event. Ken, Todd, thank you so much. We're gonna move right yeah. into our next session. Awesome, thanks for having us. Of course. Have a good one. Pleasure. Take care.